Today you'll see how to stream the Freenov ESP32 camera to your phone with minimal effort. The first thing we'll do is go to the Google Play Store on any Android and search Freenov, download the app. You can also go to github.com forward slash Freenov and download it manually if you need to do that. But the easiest way to get it installed is to download it from the Google Play Store. Mine is ready and installed and this is what it should look like. If you are brand new to this, you want to go to arduino.cc and download the Arduino IDE software. You can download for Windows, Linux, or Mac. Next, we'll go to freenov.com forward slash tutorial and download the tutorial for the kit that we purchased. Today, we're going to download the Ultimate Starter Kit. Once you click download, you have your zip file here. You want to click on that, right click, and then extract all. The ESP32-S3 uses the CH343 driver to download code, so you want to go ahead and install that to your computer first. For either Linux, Mac, or Windows, just click on the file, run that executable, and you're good to go. Next, we're going to go ahead and click on the C program file, and here you have libraries and sketches and a tutorial, which is an excellent resource if you get stuck. Let's click on sketches, go all the way down here to the bottom to sketch 33.1, which is the camera TCP server file. We're going to open this up. Now once it opens up, we are going to go over the setup real quick. Once you're in here, you want to click on File, you want to go down to Preferences, and uh, be mindful of where your sketches are on your computer. This is where all the sketches are for the Arduino. We're going to click on this down here under Additional Boards Manager URLs, and you want to make sure that you have this link right here. And this link just allows the Arduino IDE to access the JSON file that contains the information to install and manage the ESP32 board. Alright, next we're going to go up here and click on Boards Manager and we're going to type in ESP32. And you should see ESP32 by Espressive Systems. You want to install that. It looks like I need to update mine, so we'll go ahead and do that. Now when you plug in your board, you want the correct board selected. So you can click on Tools. You can go down to uh, Boards Manager and go down to ESP32 and you should see ESP32 S3 Dev Module. Now there's another way to do that. You can click right here, go down to the Boards Manager here and you can type in ESP32 S3, scroll down and you can click on the ESP32 S3 Dev Module there. And of course if it's plugged in you would have a port here that you could connect to and then click OK and you should be good to go. Since this sketch is provided in the tutorial, there's very little we need to do. Here you would add your router ID and your password before you upload it. Our image is actually upside down on our camera right now, so let's flip it to the right orientation by changing this to zero. You can also play around with the brightness and saturation on lines 175 and 176 if needed. Since our ESP32-S3 board is mounted to the Freenove expansion board for the ESP32, we're going to use the recommended power supply, which is 12 volt, 5 amp. We're not adding any extra components to our project today, but it does become more important to use the suggested power supply as we add more and more peripherals to the expansion board. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the USB so that I can upload the code to the board, and I'm also going to plug in the 12 volt power supply so that when I unplug the USB there will be no loss of power, and the board won't shut down and reboot. Next I'm going to make sure I have the correct board selected and COM port so that I can upload the code without any issues. If you see this in your serial monitor, you see it's trying to connect. This may mean that you haven't typed in your router ID and password yet. So let's go ahead and do that here. Once I've typed in the correct router ID and password, I'm going to go ahead and upload again. And if you haven't done this part, you also won't be able to connect to the camera in your app as well. Once your upload is done, you're going to see that it says Wi-Fi connected and it's going to give you a couple of different IP addresses to use in the app. And you see those right here. You should see this in your serial monitor, camera ready, use, and in the IP address to use in the app. So let's go ahead and go to the app and type in that IP address. Once it's open, we're going to tap on four wheel drive car for Raspberry Pi. And once you're in, you're going to see a default IP address in the top left corner. We're going to replace that with the IP address that's given to us in the serial monitor right here. Once you type that in, tap on the connect button and you connect to the server. And there it is, it says connecting to server succeed. And now we should get a, an initial image from our camera. And it may take a second for it to adjust, but the frame rate's not gonna be too high. Mine's usually around five or six. And uh, yours may be higher, just depending on your connection. And my phone keeps dying, there we go. 
So now that we have an image, let's go ahead and set this outside. It says right now that I have zero frames per second. So maybe it's still having a hard time connecting. Let's set it outside and see what happens. I'm in the process of making a 3D printed case for this. So I attached it to the backing of that case and I plugged in a 12 volt power supply and I just set it right outside of the garage just to see what kind of images I would get. And here's the video I got. I went back inside, grabbed my cell phone, and it's running at 5.1, 5.7 frames per second, which isn't terribly good, but um, you know, it's good enough for me. And I can see the images move, like that car right there. And it may work a little bit better for you, just depending on the strength of signal. But uh, I think I think it's a decent image. So now I can view the camera from my cell phone. So I can place it anywhere and uh, pick up my cell phone and take a look at it. It's pretty neat. Here's a snapshot in direct sunlight. I haven't played around with the settings yet on the camera, but I'd like to see what kind of images I can get in different settings. That's all I've got for today. I hope it was helpful. If it was, don't forget to like it by giving it a thumbs up. Also, leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Check out our Facebook page and other videos and consider subscribing. And I'll see you again with another video.